Hi everyone, it's Bert from Season Gaming, and we are here with a long-term slash six-month review of the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and show you what it is. First of all, if you remember, we did a review of this right around when it came out, if not at the launch date. If I remember correctly, it was roughly the start of November, I'm guessing maybe the first week of November. Retail for 180, I had seen prices drop a little lower, some around 170, depending on where you got it for. I have still seen this controller go on sale for even lower than that, 160 at times. But the MSRP for this bad boy was $179.99. So let me quick talk about it really quick and do an overview of everything that came with it, the pros, the cons, and I am going to compare it to the previous Elite solely because of now we're at the six month mark and I want everybody to be aware of what the pros were, what the cons were to that controller, and where we kind of are today with it. Has it lived up to the hype that people were looking for. So first of all, what made this controller special? It's a pretty good controller for the value. Now, a lot of third-party controllers like your Scuffs, your Nacon, stuff like that, they go for 200 plus many times. And this is gonna be a lot cheaper. It's a first-party product, uh, product, and it works for everything on the Microsoft side. So that's some very important stuff. So what were some things that came with it that were really sought after and people were looking for? So if I zoom in here a bit, these three little lights here, you have three different profiles that you can set your games up for so if you're playing a ton of different games maybe you're playing a racer maybe a fighter and then a shooter and you want to have the controller set up in a specific way you can use those three any way you like them other things that were added here were these tension um, sticks right here so if I actually zoom in a little bit here too you can see this little cross pattern thing here if you put the key inside of it and let me pull the key outside of the case this little key right here will spin and actually make the joystick tighter or looser depending on what you're wanting. Now that was one of my favorite things about this controller because one of the things is if you're playing a shooter or a racer like I was saying and you want less or more tension on that stick you can change that so big plus there. Other things that were added that were really big pros is number one it has an internal battery and that in my opinion is going to be one of the best things and we'll talk more about the pros in just a second but internal battery is one of the most sought after things and even one of the most criticized things uh, that people have really complained about the Xbox controller in the past because most of the time they're battery powered Well, this one's internal you have three different settings for your uh, triggers in the back so you have the deepest setting which will go the furthest you have a middle setting somewhere in the middle and then you have the furthest one where there's just a little tap and that thing goes the previous Xbox controller only had two settings your actual rear sticks here that um, will actually plug in are shorter and they're a bit thicker so a lot of people actually like that quite a bit from this one um, the other thing is the grip were different and a lot of people wanted that so the original elite controller if you look at it um, and I'll pull it here in just a second did not have any grips on the front here uh, it only had them in the back and so this was one of the issues that came with the original Elite controllers that these grips would fall apart on people. Well, now you have grips on the front. And one of the neat things is that it's one big piece that goes all the way around the entire controller. So that was kind of the overview of the controller. Another cool thing about it was the case itself. So if you look at the case, um, it looks like a standard uh, Elite controller case, but there's a couple things. So you have the puck here, and this actually comes out. It's magnetic on the bottom, and it sticks to the actual case. So if you turn it upside down, down, nothing will fall out of it or anything like that. You could actually put the controller in here and if you look at the, oops, put it in wrong. If you look at the back of the case, you had a little hole or access port that would open here and you could actually plug your USB-C cable in here and let it charge while in the case. Now I haven't ever done that, you know, I'm here at the six month mark and I'm not the person that's traveling to a friend's house to play games all the time, but maybe for the younger crowd or maybe if you're traveling on a bus all the time, maybe you're going to work or whatever it is that you're using, you can actually charge while leaving the controller in the case. Other thing you can do that's cool is just take it out, place it on a counter, and you can charge the controller maybe on your coffee table or something with the actual cable now going into the back here. So pretty neat, a lot of options for charging. Another cool thing that came with this controller that the other ones didn't is your joystick options. So if I pull these two joysticks out and I show you them up close, these are considered the 360 joysticks. Now you, the one negative thing about that is you only get them in one height, which is I guess the shortest height if you were to compare all the different heights. You get a super tall in the standard uh, Xbox One stick, and I haven't used this one at all, you can see. Just for comparison here, let me pull this one out. So you have the two different heights. You can kind of see the two different ones. 
And then you have this circular one um, that is, I guess, it just has grip on top, but it's also short. So at the same time that these are my favorite sticks for specific games, so the 360 ones are awesome. And if you look at the standard stick compared to the 360 stick, you can see the differences here. This one's a lot bigger, smooth all the way around. This one's smaller and it is textured around. So maybe it just depends on what time you're gaming. Now, the weird thing about it is if you are playing with these sticks and let's say you switch them and then you go back to the Xbox One or the 360 sticks, they're gonna feel really opposite of each other and it really messes with your brain and your fingers. You're gonna be like, wow, these sticks are huge. Or you're gonna go back to this one, wow, that stick is really small. And it takes a bit of time to adjust back to where you where you were before so I would actually say that the uh, the sticks that come with it and the sticks here are both pros and cons because the other negative thing is that you don't really have a lot of options so maybe you're the type of player that wants to have a really tall stick here and maybe a medium-sized stick over here well you can't it didn't come with that and then one of the negative things also is that the previous sticks from the previous Xbox one elite controller I guess you call that one the series one um, they're not interchangeable and the reason they're not interchangeable is because these sticks at the bottom have to work with this new tension controlled joystick so the the tops are not interchangeable now one other difference is is the tops of the d-pad the magnetic they're a different color and the, this color is just fantastic it's beautiful um, depending on what kind of game you're playing works the same so let me actually pull the other controller um, and actually compare them to show you the differences and i'm actually going to pull the white one, this was the last of the Series 1 controller before uh, this one came out. So if I put them together, what are the big differences? So number one, the sticks, the actual sticks that they come with, they're exactly the same with the exception that they're not interchangeable, like I said. D-pad is exactly the same, it does not feel any different. Um, the actual Xbox button here, which you use to capture, uh, maybe to turn the, uh, the console on, turn your controller on, very, very different. This one here is more like a quick mouse click. This one here is like a deeper button push. It's, it's very, very different. Now, the other thing about the Elite is that the tops of the controller are very different. When you actually take this controller apart, this is like an entire plate. It comes up and it also has the original lines of the original Xbox One controller. On this one, it's one big piece and the tops, the bumpers, the LB and RB are very different. They're designed different for more durability. Now, you'll also, like I said before when I was talking about it, is you have a grip here, you don't have a grip here at all. Profiles on the original Xbox controller, you only had two. On this one, you have three, and it's actually controlled by the tiny little LED here, and you click on that, and it moves through all three of them. Buttons are laid out the same, same differences as far as distance across from each other, all the same. Buttons, as far as the top, these bumpers, once again, they, this one feels a tad bit more like a mouse click, very responsive, more durable, a lot better to go. Um, if you notice here, Type-C versus micro USB. Another difference here is that these have a texture on the right trigger and left trigger. So if I actually zoom in on this, um, this is actually one of the great things about the trigger on the new one. Uh, the PUBG Xbox standard controller and some of the new ones and some of the new custom ones, you can get this awesome texture. And I think even the Xbox Series X will have this as a standard on controllers, but cool to have it right here on this one. This one didn't have it at all. This was just simply very smooth on the back here. If you flip them around, I did mention before, internal battery versus batteries. Um, these are gonna have your, depending on what you're using, I use just the standard plug and play Xbox battery, but you can plug your double A's in there if you need to. Once again, only two options for the triggers. On this one, you have three. On the back here, you have simply different actual sticks that you plug in and out here, and they're very basic as to what the differences are. Not, almost not even worth mentioning, but the difference on this one is that they're a little smaller, and the reason they're smaller, and what we heard from the Xbox team, is that people that have really large hands were running into the, to the larger ones all the time back here. So now that they have smaller ones, people appreciate that. Never bothered me. I don't use the back buttons too much, so not a big deal. But those are the two biggest differences as far as the aesthetics go with the controller. Now, one thing I do want to mention is, does the new controller have the same issues that the original controller have? The answer is no. 
Now the biggest differences as far as the issues that the original one had is the rear of these would fall apart. So this glue that came on the original black Xbox uh, Elite controller was defective. And if you had either maybe a hot hand, a sweaty hand, whatever the case was, this would come off. And the only way you could fix that is either with glue or replacing this entire carrier that came with the controller. And we actually did an entire how-to of that on the channel. It was one of our most viewed videos. So I appreciate the views on that, guys. Um, the other issues that this one had is that these bumpers would break all the time on people. And the reason for that is, is that it's one long piece of plastic that goes all the way across, really skinny in the back, and then comes around the other side. That did not happen with these. And as I was mentioning with the grips, this is an entirely different texture, entirely different glue. I have not heard any issues with the controller falling apart from a grip perspective. Other issues that people have had with the original Xbox Series Elite One controller is that the joysticks would go bad over time. You'd have stick drift, or you'd have this issue where the stick would kind of play inside of the actual controller and you could pull it up and down, up and down, and that became a big issue for you. You could actually shake your controller in the past and you could hear the joystick module moving up and down. Not present here at all. With that being said, there are a few issues with this controller that I have personally run into and that I've also heard people having issues with before. So right when this controller came out, a lot of people ran into the issue of the controller disconnecting while playing. That's happened about a handful of times with me since having it in November. Once again, we're tail end of March, early April, six months. I can count on my hand how many times that has happened. Very annoying. I'm not sure what causes that. I think it just might be a Bluetooth, maybe a connectivity issue not sure what it is at all the other issue that people have been having with this one is the drifting joystick I have had that I'm not sure if it's the games that I'm playing or what had happened but my right stick has started to drift a little bit on Call of Duty recently I've tried it with other games it doesn't happen so maybe it's the game maybe it's the controller but overall I'm very happy about it with that being said if you have issues with this controller, you're only given a factory 90 day warranty. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but with these controllers and the past controllers having so many issues, I hope this is gonna get extended in some way for the people that are having issues. I actually did try to call Microsoft last week, but with everything going on in the country right now with the virus and stuff like that, have not had any luck getting them on the phone um, to talk about issues that may be arising with this controller. Overall, so let's talk about the pros, we'll talk about the cons, and then I'll just give you my final thoughts on it. So the biggest pro for this controller that I can say is battery life. Not necessarily the battery that's being used here, but the battery life. I personally have never had any issues with using double A's because I use rechargeables. They last a super long time. They last a lot longer than my internal PlayStation controller. The only one that it doesn't really compete with, I guess, is the Nintendo Switch Pro controller because that one lasts just as long as this one. You're looking at 40 hours of battery life with this thing. Fantastic. I've actually played through games that are 25, 30 hours, never having to charge this once. The other pro that I have with this one is your joystick options. And like I said, this is a pro and a con. I personally love the 360 sticks. I put them on all the time. I love the ability to change the tension on each stick and be able to actually change it depending on the game I'm playing. It's literally one twist this way or one twist that way on how you like it. The last thing that I think is a massive pro is the feel of the controller. It's not too tough, it's not too soft. If you have uh, sweaty hands, I don't personally, but I would assume that you don't have any grip issues. I've talked to a few people that have sweatier hands than me. It sounds like such a weird conversation, but I, they have not had any problems with this at all. It also feels like a high quality piece of controller. There's other controllers that you will buy and you get them and you're like, man, this feels cheap. What is this? The buttons don't feel right or the joysticks don't feel right. The bumpers don't feel right. Every piece of button, every piece of plastic on here feels fantastic. Never had any problems. Those are my biggest pros. So let's talk about the cons. So some people have had those cons where they have intermittent issues. I did see people, and I'm not sure if this was just social media being social
social media, but they had issues right out of the box. They had to return it. I've heard of other people going through multiple controllers, not us. I know us at Scenes and Gaming, each one of us has one of these, not one has had to return it. So that's kind of a, a weird thing. Another thing is that I've run into is the odd feeling of some of the triggers. In playing uh, some of the shooters that I play, you will hit a button and it just sometimes doesn't feel right. I can't really explain it. I will shoot and sometimes it doesn't feel like it registered. Once again, I am not sure if that is the game or the controller. I, however, I, in playing with my other Elite controller, I've never had a problem with any game. And even the same game is played, like I mentioned Call of Duty, Eraser, whatever, where the button will hit on a shot or when I'm zooming in or something. This one has never failed me on feeling weird. I have felt a weird button press a number of times on this, and I'm not sure if it's just the way the uh, contact point on the motherboard is. I'm not sure what it is, but it's kind of all over the place. Lastly, my last con is the price. So as I did say, MSRP on this one is $180, $180 here in the States. Is it a big enough jump for your average gamer that just likes to have a nice controller in hand while playing games? I would argue, and this is gonna sound weird after I just prop this up forever, if you're just an average gamer, you don't like changing sticks, you don't like changing profiles, you are never gonna use these magnetic pieces, you're never gonna change the, uh, the actual length that the, the triggers fall through, I would say it's not worth it. It's not worth just the 40 hour battery life when you can have an elite, maybe you have an existing elite and you're thinking about upgrading um, and now you're saying, should I pay that extra money? What am I gonna do with this controller now that I'm upgrading to this one? If you're just a casual gamer and you like a, new, a nice new controller, stick with this one. As a matter of fact, do what we did. We actually took one of the our original Elite controller. We changed the front uh, face on here for I think six bucks. We did the scuff upgrade kit, which gave us a nicer rear trigger and added these sticks on here. And this is a fantastic controller. We've actually had to change these sticks. I mean, just look at our channel at the videos and you can see all the things that you can do with a standard Elite controller. And maybe you can even get one slightly used and do all these things instead of buying this one. However, let me once again change the, the table here really quick. If you are a hardcore gamer, if you are the type of gamer that likes to upgrade all the options that I've mentioned, you like changing your D-pad, you like changing the tension, you like changing the rear, um, the, the rear uh, uh, settings for your actual triggers, and you like using the rear sticks that you can use here, it's worth every single penny. So like I said at the beginning on this, it's really gonna depend on what kind of gamer you are. If you're a hardcore gamer, you like a great controller, you love tons of options, buy this. It's fantastic. I would argue it's the best controller on the market. If you're a casual gamer, if you don't find yourself using all these great options and you just like having a nice controller, you don't have the scratch right now to get one, and you already have the original one, stick with this one or look for a sell or a clearance on these because they're just as good in a number of areas. Otherwise, get this controller. I can't tell you how good it is. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, if maybe there's something that I went over too fast or you've been curious about, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.